All right. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, uh, everybody. Uh, I'm Olya Chaputin. I'm part of organizing committee, and I'll be your host for the next couple of hours. Uh, so we had um, an amazing first day yesterday with about 600 people attending, uh, excellent uh, lineup of talks, presenters, and fun breaks in between. So we can guarantee we're going to have as, uh, as interesting and uh, as engaging day today with a lot of great presentations. Just uh, a couple of housekeeping items before I pass it uh, to uh, the opening remarks. Uh, Tom, uh, Mock, uh, we have um, Expo that you guys can explore. We have networking uh, setup that you guys can explore as well. We have a Q&A uh, chat where we're very welcoming the questions to our presenters. So please uh, put your questions in Q&A, upload questions. Uh, and engage uh, with presentations. Uh, also, I do want to uh, give a shout out to people who are uh, working backstage, uh, Alice, Eric, Harvey, Phil, Daniela, who uh, are making this event seamless and successful. Uh, with that, I'll pass it to Tom Mock for our opening remarks. Thank you so much for having me. Um, honored to be here and honored to kind of be presenting for y'all. Uh, I have a soft spot in my heart for all of kind of pharma and the biomedical science space. That's where I got my start uh, back in PhD program, uh, was in biomedical science, neurobiology, although not on the translational side, like a lot of y'all might be working on. Uh, for today's kind of opening, um, I decided to kind of go with this theme of like, hello world. But in this case, saying hello, Quarto, talking about uh, a new project from uh, Positive PBC, formerly known as our studio. We recently rebranded uh, and talking about Quarto as this tool for scientific communication, um, for data analysis and for data science. If you want to see the slides in the future, they're linked here on the page at thomasmock.quarto.pub slash rpharmacorto. And they're also linked on each page. So once you go there, you could find um, the slides from directly. So with this idea of Quarto and like the kind of this new thing that's coming around, uh, wh what's in that name in terms of why are we talking about Quarto today? You might have actually heard the name R Markdown more or things like Markdown for writing uh, technical documents. And Quarto is essentially an extension or a next generation of R Markdown and its growth into something new and exciting and kind of building on the past of what R Markdown provided. If we hear from JJ Allaire, the founder and uh, uh, CEO, president of uh, our studio, now Posit PBC, he talked about Quarto as this next generation of our markdown, basically this rebuilding from the ground up of our markdown to support more languages, more environments, and to learn from the 10 years of experience that we have with our markdown, weaving it into this more complete and cohesive whole. For me, kind of building off of that, Quarto was really focused on collaboration both within and across data science languages. So obviously a huge focus on R, but also crossing kind of the, uh, the gates and kind of talking to folks in Julia and letting them use it and get all the power of Quarto in our markdown, as well as for Python devs or JavaScript, or even between scientists and non-technical domain experts like physicians who may not be coders or programmers, but can still interact with things like Quarto through the visual editor or through the output formats that you're creating. As far as what Quarto actually is, Quarto is an open source scientific and technical publishing system built on Pandoc. And what this looks like in practice is that Quarto is a language agnostic command line interface. Command line interface meaning that you can access it through R, you can access it through Python, through Julia, but ultimately you're accessing it at the most basic level through a shell or a terminal like this. So for my shell, I might call something like Quarto dash dash help to get the help page about what Quarto can do. So it tells me that I'm on this version 1.2. I can do things like render an input file to different output formats. I can preview a document and kind of maintain a render that kind of changes as I make changes to the document. And I can publish the document just like the slides I made today to something like Quarto Pub or to other uh, hosting services that are available. But it's more than just a CLI or this kind of access to the shell. It also has integrations into things like our studio or integrations into VS Code and can be used with Jupyter. And we'll talk a little bit about what this looks like uh, through some diagrams. If we take a step back and think about our markdown, 
uh, our markdown here is using a .rmd file. Uh, our code is processed by Knitter, generates a markdown file, but then is processed by Pandoc to actually convert to a final report or presentation or project. And this is very powerful, um, but it's very dependent upon R. And some of the pre-processing is actually done at the level of R as opposed to being done exclusively through Pandoc. If we look at this for Quarto, the diagram looks almost identical. You have a QMD file instead of an R markdown, but you can still use Knitter. But now Pandoc has additional Lua filters. We're doing all of the processing that's not language specific in Pandoc, meaning that you don't actually have to have R to process these documents. There's this future world where uh, technical communication could occur and a you know, physician could work on a Quarto document without ever having to be exposed to R if they didn't want to. And it also opens it up to other languages. So we can use it with R. We can also use it with a Jupyter backend and use it with Julia or with Python or with JavaScript or with many other languages natively executing that code in the document. And additionally for collaboration, while a lot of people are familiar with Markdown or R Markdown or today Quarto, um, additional folks might actually want to use a different interface and actually use a Jupyter Notebook as their editor. And that's also possible with Quarto, where you can use Jupyter as your interface and still render out the same reports and presentations and projects. So lots of collaboration is possible. But beyond other different data science languages, I mean, this is an R conference through and through right now. Um, it also allows you to do things like unify some of the different layout structures. So let's say I had a document, this article about Boston Terriers, which I love those dogs. And I want to render this report out to both HTML and to PDF. If you're familiar with those technologies, HTML uses CSS and HTML behind the scenes. And PDF uses things like LaTeX behind the scenes. So very different ecosystems. But with Quarto, there's a shared syntax. And we can actually generate an HTML document that looks like this, and also generate a PDF document that looks like this from the exact same source code. So true single source publishing, whether we're publishing out to Word or to PDF or to HTML, you can share this kind of syntax and common framework to get things done, which is very powerful regardless of the language you're using. And especially for existing R Markdown users, uh, this is a big benefit of Quarto over the past experience with R Markdown. If we take a look behind the scenes at what a Quarto Markdown file looks like in terms of like, okay, was it different than our Markdown? Has it feel? It still has metadata or YAML front matter like this, where you can define the format you're creating. You can choose an engine. Again, you can use Knitter to execute R code, or you can use Jupyter to execute Julia code or Python code or other language engines natively. You'll have code chunks, so R code chunks, Python code chunks, Julia code chunks, whatever you want to put together and write those out. And then you have text or markdown where you can actually define the formatting of your document as you move forward. So still very familiar to our experience with our markdown previously. Another benefit though of like kind of Quarto growing out of our markdown is it's this one install batteries included. So it's actually bundled and pre-installed already with our studio 2022.07.1 and beyond. So essentially if you install the latest version of our studio, it's there and it's always available. So you don't actually have to install anything else to use it. What this really means is that the full ecosystem of our markdown, which was actually dozens of packages, can be used together in Quarto without having to install many different things. Just that one global install gives you presentations and books and websites, all these different powerful tools. It also means that you can use it, of course, within our studio, and it'll feel very similar to our markdown. But you can also use it within the visual editor in our studio. So you have this ability to write technical documents, insert citations, and have it talk to things like Zotero to manage those citations. For your collaborators or folks that you have to work with, they might actually want to use Jupyter Notebooks, and Quarto can be used there. Or they might even use VS Code for R or Python or other languages, and Quarto can also work inside there with the language extension. So regardless of the editor, there's a rich experience available for Quarto. And then lastly, kind of as we wrap up, just giving this brief kind of hello world of what Quarto can provide, it also allows you to freeze computation. So again, as you're collaborating across long-running projects, 
you may need to actually store the computation for others to use in the future. And Quarto allows you to do this across an entire folder of uh, files and projects. With that, I've kind of reached my moment and we're gonna kick off with the next keynote. Uh, I do have some material here you can look at. And again, the slides are available at thomasmock.quarto.pub, r pharma Quarto. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.